Before I read uh, His Excellency the President's eulogy, uh, because that I think is the critical role I'll play today, I won't read my own message, I need to say this. For us in public service, uh, and for you, our clergy and leaders who are here, sometimes people think we are perfunctory, we perform the roles we perform just like that. But people don't know that in the course of the work that we do, if I may speak for myself as a minister for uh, interior, the minister in charge of security, nothing is more emotionally draining and painful like burying some of your best officers. And yet for the last five years, I go through this all the time when I go to receive officers I have lost on the battlefront as a result of attacks or officers we've lost to disease. But there's a way in which this particular one, I must confess to all of you who are here, is not just personal to me, but it's incredibly painful. Until I came to the Ministry of Interior five years ago, I just used to hear of Wanini. Occasionally I would see her in the papers. I'd never interacted with her. Then, you know, I came over to the ministry under very difficult circumstances because my predecessor, the late General Joseph Kayseri, had just died suddenly in July 2017. And in that process, and later on when I even became the substantive minister, uh, in moments of crisis, and that is how the security sector usually works, you, you rely and work with few senior officers. And because you are always together, you know, solving problems, working on things here and there, you develop a very personal relationship with them. And they become part of your success or part of your failure. Because you sound them out on all decisions, you work with them, you call them, you know, we talk at crazy hours, we in the security sector, we talk at 1 a.m., 3 a.m., when there are no problems. Because you can't sleep when two terrorists have escaped from your maximum security prison. And so, in the course of that, I started working very closely with Wanini. That time she was a commandant at uh, Langata Women's Prison. And to demonstrate to you the impact of Wanini in the security sector, Ian, I, I have lost count of the number of senior security officials who have called me personally since this uh, message about the death of Wanini broke out. All our senior security officers, General Robert Kiboshi, the CDF, Mr. Hilary Mutiambai, the Inspector General, with whom I was yesterday, Major General Philip Kameru, the Director General of the National Intelligence Service, uh, all our generals who are manning some of our critical units, who have spoken to me, and each one of them relating to me a painful thing that I find difficult to go through, how, what Wanini meant to them, how she was useful, and what kind of officer she was. So we continued working together. And then a time came when we had to appoint a commandant for the prison's staff college. I remember when the proposals came to us, as the case usually is, Wanini's name was there, but she wasn't the preferred proposal from what we had received. And then I asked my peers then, Sainab Hussein, why can't we uh, give this woman, the commandant at Langata, an opportunity to be the commandant at PSTC. Um, she said, I have no problem, but let's consult around and find out whether anyone has a problem. But as you know, and I have to speak to you wonderful people very candidly as a public servant, usually when these appointments are done, even when the act doesn't say that, the commandant of the staff training college is a senior officer, 
where the opinion of the president must be expressly sought and endorsed before an appointment of that kind is made. I was shocked when uh, Sainabu and I went to see the president and gave him the list of the names we had received. The president didn't take a minute. He said, appoint this woman, Wanini. I know her. This is the one. And so we didn't spend two minutes. That was the end of the story. We had our instructions, came back, and a letter was done to appoint her. Then we began a new journey of her working at the PSTC and transforming the place and turning the place around. Every single time I went to the PSTC, I even challenged the Inspector General of Police one time, said, you know, good people, if I had anything serious to be run, I would give it to a woman. Because look at how this woman has changed this college. Place is impeccably clean from the time you enter the college to every corner you go to. And when you sit down to get a brief from Wanini, it is meticulously done and straightforward. But I have to say this for the officers who are listening to me here. My own personal experience with Wanini and, and why I am really pained by this death, but as I believe I trust in the Lord, this officer who lies there was incredibly honest in an environment where sometimes you can actually be misled by your officers. Incredibly honest. She always would tell you things as they are. And many times she would tell me, Minister, no, not this way. If we go this direction, we are going to have a problem. And you know, you can tell from the eulogy you are reading here that Nwanini was much older than me. And although I was, I am the minister, she has been in the prison service for four decades, in terms of age, she's older than me. And she could be arrogant or snobbish or resistance to my guidance or whatever the case was. This officer was right, dutiful, committed, and focused on our work almost to a fault. And so every time we work, it was such a joy to work with Wanini. Even during the transition, when we had the challenges at committee, it had become commonplace for us to uh, say, or for me in the office to tell people, call Wanini, because I want to find out what she thinks about this before we move forward. And times without number, my own colleague, Winnie Ushu, seated here, can bear me out. When we had difficulties, we always looked for Wanini. When we were directed by the president to do a very difficult job in the prison service the other day to relook at the training and, and how we we'll build synergies between the prison service and the Ministry of Education and so on. Again, we said, look for Wanini so that she can sort us out. And then we were joined by my sister, P.S. Kwekwe, when a cabinet reshuffle happened. And we formed a very solid uh, team uh, working together. I had the privilege of launching her two books. And then I said what I believed, then I believe now and will always believe that this woman was meant for the stars. She was going to scale the heights. And it was very common actually to be very sincere with you. Among the stars in the security sector who are beginning to look at Wanini as a possible head of one of our agencies because of the sheer hard work the level of honesty that she put in her work and how she delivered on her assignments. So we are all sad. And actually, for me, I must confess to you good people, it, I'm going to take a little bit of time, maybe after this service, to be able to come to terms with what has happened because the Commissioner General called me and gave me information without preamble or warning 
about the laws of Wanini. I didn't even have the opportunity to live through the emotional thing of seeing her unwell and so on, because I never uh, saw her in, in that kind of way. When we started the cadet training for the prison service, those of you, my senior colleagues who are here with me and who are within earshot of the president during the pass out, the president told Wanini, you've beaten us yet again, all of us men. Because she was the first commandant of a security sector training institution to put up a woman parade commander. And it was exciting to all of us. So the president challenged the KDF, the police, with the inspector general, and said, look, Wanini has beaten you again. So it's up to you to go and do something. Of course, soon after, I was gratified to see that the inspector general and the commandant of Kiganjo found a woman parade commander when we passed out the women police at Kiganjo. And recently I have seen uh, that KDF is taking up the challenge too. So I, I have been trying to come to terms with this situation personally as a leader of this ministry and, and also, you know, as a public servant, as a believer. There's the time in life when you conclude that surely there must be a reason why God allowed this to happen. I want the world to know from me, as somebody who worked with this wonderful woman, that we have lost one of our best officers in the system. Death this time round, has not only been unkind to us, but it has been violent and unacceptably painful in the death of Wanini. I will miss her. And anybody who runs this sector will know. And therefore, my brother, the brigadier, Wariyoba, the Commissioner General, and my sister, the Deputy Commissioner General, my sister, the PS, my sister, the Chief Administrative Secretary, and all of you senior colleagues, the clergy. I think I comfort you the best way I can as your minister. You are going to miss this woman, we will miss this woman. But let's hope that her life uh, will be the lesson that it has been to all of us. Ian and your family, the no amount of words we say will mean anything to you at this point in time. We cannot even replace your mom, but we can only pray for you, that the Lord may comfort you, and the Lord may hold you with his mighty right hand, as the psalmist says that the Lord may shine his face upon you so that you may have peace that passeth all understanding, that you may walk and live in the hope that your mother who was meant for the stars has done her bit and you start walking in the shadows of a great mom. May the Lord help you trace those steps so that you too when your time comes, will say, I made my contribution, as I believe Wanini uh, is saying. Finally, before I read the President's eulogy, to the family of Wanini, to my colleagues in the prison service, I bring condolences from several of my cabinet colleagues. Uh, many who work personally with Wanini, who knew Wanini, the Honorable the Attorney General of the Republic of Kenya, retired Justice Kihara Karioki. The Minister for Transport and Infrastructure, the Honorable James Masharia. The Minister for ICT, 
Mr. Joseph Musheru, my brother, the Minister for Health, the Honorable Mutai Kawe. All of them asked me that when I get here, I say, Pole, our Minister for Public Service, Professor Margaret Kobia, was so overwhelmed by this death. She came to my office and sat there for a while because she's the one who awarded Wanini, one of the top awards in the public service. So across government, whichever way you look at it, Wanini did not just make a name, she created an impact, an indelible impact in the exemplary service that she gave to her country. On behalf of those colleagues of mine, on behalf of the heads of our security agencies, whom I mentioned earlier, I say, Pole, we have all lost, but we trust in the Lord, even in tough times such as this. Brigadier Warioba, His Excellency the President, in his capacity as the Chairman of the National Security Council, directed this morning, and the decree will be signed I think in the course of this week, that we name one of the prime buildings at PSTC, Wanini Kereri. So, <laughs> you and Madam Mumundi will have 48 hours within which to make the decision so that the declaration can be signed. The President says that's the least he can do to honor such a wonderful officer. And so therefore, here is President Kenyatta's eulogy. It is with deep sorrow that I learned of the demise of the late Senior Assistant Commissioner General of Prisons, Mrs. Wanini Kereri. I express my deepest condolences to her family and the entire Kenya Prisons Fraternity. The country has lost a selfless, dedicated patriot who gave her entire life to serving the country. Everywhere the late Wanini worked, she always left a mark, both physical and emotional. At a time when prisons were viewed as dens of death, Wanini turned around that perception by initiating programs for inmates which gave the institutions a humane image. I have been following keenly her deeds and indeed she was a trailblazer. The beauty bechants, remote parenting and facilitation of children accompanying their mothers to an environment conducive for wholesome child development that she introduced in Nangata Women's Prison has remodeled prisons to correctional facilities. After an excellent performance at Langata Women, when she was deployed to Shimola Tewa, maximum security prison for men, she proved that what men can do, women can do even better. She equally transformed the prison making it a model for others to emulate. Wanini valued her work and was always ready to give someone a second chance besides the many rehabilitation programs she introduced in the prisons. She supported inmates to even publish books while incarcerated. We have lost a Kenyan who was inspiring and a role model, especially to the young women of this country. The way she has managed the prison staff training college is unprecedented, again showing that women of this country have untapped potential and that they only need opportunities to deliver. Today, I mourn an officer from whose life we draw many lessons. With all the responsibilities she held 
at her various workplaces and especially as Commandant PSTC, she still had time to publish two very educative books. The late Wanini can only be described as an epitome of hard work. Growing through the ranks to the third highest within the prisons department was no mean achievement. Wanini, you have fought the good fight. You have finished the race. You have kept the faith. And as the Commander-in-Chief of the Kenya Defense Forces and the Chairperson of the National Security Council, I salute you. Rest in peace. Honorable Uhuru Kenyatta, President of the Republic of Kenya and Commander-in-Chief of the Kenya Defense Forces.